Hello and welcome to News on the Interviews. I am Shardul and today we have with us Mr. Avtar Singh Basin. He worked in the Ministry of External Affairs for three decades and retired as the director of its historical division. Today we are here to discuss his latest book, Nehru, Tibet and China, published by Penguin. This book is a fascinating window into the events and decisions which culminated into what we know as the 1962 war and its aftermath. Hello, Mr. Basin. Thank you, Mr. Doon, and I'm happy to be with you. And most people do not know, as Mr. Basin just mentioned, that trouble started in 1914, much, much decades before 1962. So, Mr. Basin, please tell our viewers how it began in 1914, because it's such a fascinating tale. Just to give them an idea, because it's hard to cover such a long subject in a small interview. My friend, in 1914, you had this uh, Shimla Convention. The borders were not discussed during the conference. That was China's stand. That you have not discussed the border, but in the draft you have presented to the meeting, you have introduced two lines, a red line and blue line. In Article 9, we define the border. Red line defines the border between India and Tibet, and the blue line between Tibet and China. They said, how should you draw this line? We are not even aware. So we will not accept this agreement, this treaty or convention, whatever you may call, unless you stick to this 90, Article 9. And the Nehru was aware that China had not accepted it. And in, when the communist took over, he said, he's on record to have said, and in the book is mention of it, that this paints a very different picture from what, 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 uh, what many people understand. Most, in fact, most people understand about what happened between India and China. Why is this such a hard nut to crack for both the nation's foreign services? It was possible if we had agreed to discuss the border. And in 1988, when, when uh, Rajiv Gandhi went to China, he froze the matter. He said, let us not discuss the border. Let us stay where you are. Where you are. Let us go ahead with other subjects. Well, if your territory, you, presume, you claim your claim territory, is under somebody's occupation. You should be interested in solving it, talking about it. But you froze the whole thing where it was, which suited China because they were an the occupation of the whole area. It was a disputed area, undoubtedly. Yes. In the 1953, 2nd December, in the brief prepared for the discussion with China and Tibet, Aksai Chin was shown as a disputed territory. In India's map. In India's own brief for the delegation. Instead of trying to say, oh, it's the spirit that you why not settle it? The orders given or the brief given to the delegation was not to discuss border at all. After 1960, China was totally disillusioned with Nehru. And they have come to the conclusion that it is very difficult to discuss things with Nehru and they will not, it, no settlement can be made. And there's a need to resort to some other method. And that method was what happened in 1962. So well, I had told President uh, Nixon, like, yeah, when he went in 1971, that Nehru was so discourteous that he would not allow us to even speak. So Chinese had made up their mind that India needs to be taught a lesson or need to be dislodged from its position of high position of uh, whatever it's occupying. Why is the government so afraid or reluctant to de declassify you know, old archives? And would doing that would in invariably lead to open discussions and transparency? Since independence, nothing has been thrown open, though it's against the archival rules. Archival rules 1997 suggest that these records should be made available after 25 years. And in the case of those records, which are of this very classified nature or of uh, strategic nature, the provision to access them can be made on case by case basis. And, but no case, it is totally every, each and every paper of the government of India since independence is, at least of the Ministry of External Affairs and Defense is out of bound for anybody. It, I was lucky that- uh, The incident and the years and discussions and happenings around how the Lai Lama took exile in India, because in your book, you write earlier, he wanted to come, but because the government didn't acquiesce to it, he did not. And then we changed our sound. So please tell our viewers, how did that come to pass? In 19, few, 
a month after the Chinese attack finished and then the talks were going to start in Beijing between the Chinese and Tibetans. The, well, uh, Chou Wenlai warned the ambassador that if you keep asylum to him, our relation will come under shadow. So I would not advise you to give him asylum. Panikar said, well, sir, we have given him the assurance that he will be given the asylum. If he comes, we cannot stop him. But it will be only cultural and religious, and he will not be allowed to make any public statement or allowed to have any public activity. Is it possible ever in the current context and looking what has happened in the past that India and China would be able to coexist peacefully? In or these disputes would get resolved. Forget peace. These border disputes would ever get resolved. People should support the government that let us talk to China on the basis of that we accept what went wrong. Aksai Chin was a disputed territory. It was undefined in our own maps and we made the mistake. Let us sit down and sort this out one for all. But you must also not insist on taking this uh, Nifa or the Nifa. Uh, Tuang or uh, Arunachal Pradesh. You have to give up your claim on that once for all. And let us live in peaceful settlement. Mufat Khoro, Muft Me, It Nights Milega. To watch the full unedited interview, you have to subscribe to News Laundry and pay to keep news free. Because when the public pays, the public is served. We depend on you and not on advertisers. So go to www.newslaundry.com slash subscription and subscribe and get all our unedited interviews, our special video shows, comics and everything that's behind the paywall. Remember to subscribe to News Laundry, you pay just about 10 rupees a day. That's less than, well no, a cigarette and smoking is injurious to health. So subscribe and watch the full interview.